vida internacional que seguro que a todos nos van a enseñar. A ver, todos hemos puesto el LinkedIn y hablamos inglés perfecto, pero nos dice que hay muchos, que a lo mejor no mucho y tal, nos cuesta. Antes hemos visto los subtítulos que ya trampa, pero ahora que está en persona, hay unos auriculares, no diremos nada a nadie, hay unos auriculares que traducen simultáneamente al castellano, ¿vale? Y eso que escucha por el poquito español, me han dicho que la cena se soltó un montón, o sea que soltó, se soltó la noche bastante, o sea que nada. Un fuerte aplauso para Kunteron. estar aquí uh, y hablar en español. Uh, estaba aquí un rato en los años 90, 90 por el amor de una mujer. Sí, la hermosa Elena. Bueno, al final, el, al final uh, no funcionó con, con ella, pero he quedado uh, buenos recuerdos de esta ciudad. Um, bueno, después de 25 años, mi español es un poco oxidado. So this presentation will be a mix of um, English and Spanish until the translator in your ear will, be, will go completely deserved. She will be really pissed at me by the end of my presentation. Um, so, um, why am I here? Why, why did this Bisiane invite me. Um, he hecho un uh, proyecto uh, este año para una revista holandesa. Me han preguntado de hacer una lista de los mejores casos, <coughs> mejores casos de uh, content marketing en el mundo. Y uh, bueno, no es fácil encontrar estos, estos casos. Y uh, lo que he hecho es hablar con organizaciones como Bicena y otros en otros países. Y esta mañana voy a presentar siete de estos casos. Bueno, empezamos con Austria y uh, un caso del Fiat uh, 500 X. Uh, so, the good people of Fiat Austria, they uh, They had, to, they had to launch the new Fiat, which I think is an ugly car, uh, the 500X, and they didn't know what arguments to use. So they said, well, do we have to talk about uh, espacio, uh, tecnología, or uh, diseño? Um, so what they did was interesting. To, uh, to fuel their advertising, they started with content, content marketing. So they set out a number of content pieces uh, talking about the different arguments that they could use in their future ad campaign. So they did that in print, but also online. And then they started measuring. So where do people come from? What do they click on? Uh, what kind of color do they use in the car configuration? And so, in the end, they found out that technology and green is the favorite combination for um, people in Austria. And that's what they used in their ad campaigns, which made their ad campaigns more successful. Next case is from uh, Germany, and it's, it's a funny case, kind of. Uh, which is a strange thing, uh, humor and Germany, I know. Uh, uh, it's for a supermarket, um, uh, the supermarket uh, a bit like Aldi or uh, Lidl. It's called Rewe, and they, they have their own house brand called Ja, uh, and their baseline is, can we afford this? Podemos pagar eso? Sí, es la respuesta. So, in this esta uh, filosofía <coughs> quería uh, hacer una campaña um, entonces la filosofía podemos pagar eso y so the campaign they did is the cheapest campaign you can possibly think of it cost zero zero euro 
So they just wanted to prove that they could make a big scale campaign, which wasn't even aired. So the whole idea was just make three spots and put the making of the spots online as content. I'm going to show you one of the spots where they hijack uh, or try to hijack a, a spa, a health center, uh, to use as an uh, environment for their commercial. Ich hoffe, dass wir die ein bisschen bestechen können mit Fuß von der Anfang. Ich habe den Auftrag, eine Challenge zu gewinnen, und zwar die günstigste Werbung für Liebe zu Jahr zu drehen. Und deswegen gehe ich Locations ab und suche coole Spas in der Richtung. Das ist eine Ich würde mich laufen, aber ich gehe dann ins Bad nach Hause. Talk about himself, talk about, I'm the best, vote for me. 
And she did something completely different. She talked about her, air, her neighborhood. Uh, she talked about the people around her and how they live in a very honest, very authentic way. And this is what gave her the vote. I'm going to show you a short clip of the video because it takes, it takes about four minutes. Uh, but it had more than four million views only at Twitter alone. Women like me aren't supposed to run for office. <coughs> I wasn't born to a wealthy or powerful family. Mother from Puerto Rico, dad from the South Bronx. I was born in a place where your zip code determines your destiny. My name is Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. I'm an educator, an organizer, a working class New Yorker. I've worked with expected mothers, I've waited tables, and led classrooms. And going into politics wasn't in the plan. But after 20 years of the same representation, we have to ask, who has New York been changing for? Every day gets harder for working families like mine to get by. The rent gets higher, healthcare covers less, and our income stays the same. It's clear that these changes haven't been for us, and we deserve a champion. It's time to fight for a New York that working families can afford. That's why I'm running for Congress. This race is about people versus money. We've got people, they've got money. It's time we acknowledge that not all Democrats are the same. That a Democrat who takes corporate money, profits off foreclosure, doesn't live here, doesn't send his kids to our schools, doesn't drink our water or breathe our air, cannot possibly represent us. What the Bronx and Queens needs is Medicare for all, tuition for public college, a federal jobs guarantee and criminal justice reform. We can do it now. It doesn't take a hundred years to do this. It takes political courage. A New York for the many is possible. It's time for one of us. Vote for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on June 26th. Nobody's talking about Joe Crowley anymore. And uh, everybody, she's all around. So uh, she's a big winner in the Democratic Party. Next one up is uh, Japan. Um, Anyone here ever been to Japan? <coughs> Some people? Um, well, Japan, they wanted to attract more people to, to visit their country. And, uh, well, they suffered with uh, a lot of, um, how do you say that in Spanish? Malentendidos. So people had the wrong idea about, uh, about uh, Japan. So it's too expensive and, and uh, it's, it's hard to travel there, and people don't understand me and everything. So they started addressing all these questions, all these problems, in a, well, it's a classic content marketing campaign. And they did this on, just on Facebook. So they had very sim sympathetic um, uh, posts like this. So if you go to Japan, do I have to sleep in these um, capsule hotels and just eat ramen, so noodles, uh, all day? No, you don't. Um, and uh, so this campaign, well, it's not a campaign, it's, it's a content marketing program, worked really well. So they, they gained 20,000 uh, no, followers on their Facebook page. They had something like 58,000 engagements on the posts they put up. And most importantly, they gained 80% more online bookings for people to visit Japan. Next one, nearly there. Um, so this one is interesting. It's a, it's a case for a, um, a forest, um, a nature reserve in Poland. And it's one of the biggest nature reserves in the whole of Europe. Uh, it's called Biolobicza uh, Forest. Any Polish people here in the room? My Polish is, is even more rusty than my Spanish. Um, and so the, the forest um, 
Greenpeace, they found out that there was illegal logging. Uh, how do you say that? Alarm arborists in, in, the, in the forest. And so they started protesting. And the, uh, the protest was dismissed by the government. More even, they shut down the whole forest for the public. So there was something fishy there. And uh, then something incredible happened. So um, within the game Minecraft, uh, you must have kids who play Minecraft, uh, the popular game Minecraft, a virtual forest was erected with 50,000, no, 50 billion blocks. And the community, the Minecraft community, they <laughs> loved it. So they wrote about it, they took pictures, uh, they commented uh, about it on, on, online. And uh, when everybody got used to this for virtual forest, it was cut down, apart from one tree. Um, one tree was left over as a symbol for the protest uh, for the Bioluitsa forest. And uh, this got many things moving. So 170,000 petitions were signed by the people, by Polish people. The Minister of Environment, he was fired. And uh, the illegal logging was stopped. And the, uh, the forest was opened again to the public. Last one. Quick, quick sip. Uh, you all know this one. Seagrams. I guess that uh, Paco who was on stage just now. You are responsible for this? Good work. Uh, yeah, what I really like about it, well, I don't have to explain the whole campaign. So it's, it's bringing experiences from New York to Spain, different cities, different experiences. Uh, but what I really like, and that's why I put it up there, is to, uh, to congratulate uh, the people who worked on this. Because when I prepared, prepared the speech, I looked on the website and I saw that there was a new chapter now out. I think two weeks, uh, there's a new chapter with new experiences in new cities. And this is the way to address content marketing. It's what Christina said in the opening uh, discussion. Don't look at content marketing as a campaign. Look at it as a program. And if you keep this fresh all the time, if you do small alterations, um, people will keep on loving it and you, will, you, you can work on this program for years. So that's it. Uh, gracias, Madrid.